Hello, my dear students. Uh, today, our topics of discussion is baking ingredients and functions. And you know me very well, that is I'm a book, your course teacher. And in our, in our last class, we already read about some ingredients of baking, and that was fully on flour that what kinds of flour and what is the gluten percentage and how we will use that. These all the things we have read uh, in our previous class. And in our today's class, actually we uh, read about some more ingredients of baking, like the leavening agents and how they use their types, difference between them. And with that, we also read some other ingredients also. So we we'll start now. First of all, uh, that is your ingredients. One, that is after our uh, wheat flour, that is our second important ingredient that we call the uh, leavening essence. So what is leavening essence actually? Leavening essence actually is some substances that produces gas in case of mixing with other ingredients. Okay, for example, that is substances that produce gases when these are mixed with other ingredients and due to this mixing, whenever your whole product will raise, that is called the leavening agents. Okay, and mainly three types of leavening agents are used. Chemical agent, that is then biological agent and then physical agent. That is actually our three main types of leavening agent that we mainly used in baking. And now we'll learn in details about this agent and how that is used. So first of all, our chemical agent. So that is the word chemicals, okay? That means any kind of chemical will be there for producing that leavening, okay? So uh, these are actually, this main function actually, they release the gas into the product, okay? These leaveners release gas into the product and that is mainly carbon dioxide. And the main uh, gases that is released carbon dioxide and we found it from two kind of acid. One is baking powder, another is baking soda. So first of all, we uh, know about baking soda. So what is baking soda actually? Baking soda actually is commonly known as uh, sodium bicarbonate that is commonly known as baking soda. And it's a chemical compound with the formula that is sodium bicarbonate. That it is a salt that composed of one ion sodium cation and another is bicarbonate anion. That cation and anion mix together and produce that sodium bicarbonate which we know as baking soda. And it is a white solid that is crystalline, but other often it appears as a fine powder. And we always use at a, as a fine powder actually. And it is salty and taste is alkaline. And it produces carbon dioxide gas when, when actually it is mixed with other acidic ingredients like vinegar, buttermilk, lemon juice, yogurt, sour cream, molasses, or honey, or other acidic material, because actually this sodium bicarbonate is a base, okay? And whenever acid mix with this base in, uh, in dough, then the reaction happen and this carbon dioxide gas produces. And if you reduce the amount of baking soda and you don't use another kinds of uh, agent there, so your product will not be good. For example, if uh, your product needs uh, the, uh, one teaspoon of baking soda, by, but you use half teaspoon, okay, then your product will not so much good or so not so much soft as it's needed because carbon dioxide is not produced so much as it can raise or make the product softer, okay? So that is our baking soda. Then our next chemical agent is baking powder, okay? So what is actually baking powder? It is all, also a dry chemical leavening agent and it's a mixture of sodium carbonate or bicarbonate and two big acids. We can remember that in case of baking soda, actually, there was only sodium bicarbonate and it was only one ingredient, okay? That, that only sodium bicarbonate is one ingredient. But in case of baking powder, 
with that uh, sodium carbonate and bicarbonate also two weak acids are present there which is called first called monocalcium phosphate and second acid can be two types either it will be sodium acid pyrophosphate or sodium aluminium sulfate these two kinds of acids are present actually with their sodium carbonate or bicarbonate and it helps for increasing the volume and lightening the texture of plate coats so in case of a monocalcium phosphate their activity also different whenever monocalcium phosphate uh, does not react with the sodium bicarbonate while it's dry but as soon as the baking powder is mixed in wet dough or batter then these two ingredient mix that is monocalcium phosphate and the sodium bicarbonate mix together and then produce the carbon dioxide gas and then the your dough will be raised and another was that is our second acid sodium acid pyrophosphate or sodium aluminium sulfate these actually uh, don't react whenever it only wet for reaction of their sodium acid pyrophosphate or sodium aluminium sulfate it needs both the condition it will be wet and it also will be hot with that two uh, actually plus of uh, wet and hot it's not possible to raise the or leaven in the product but if it is monocalcium sulfate phosphate uh, then if it is wet then the product will leavening or product will rise but in case of these two acid these two condition is mandatory that the your product will be wet and hot that means sodium acid pyrophosphate or sodium aluminium sulfate won't start reacting until your dough or your batter will not go to the oven whenever it go for oven then these two acids will react and your product will rise so that was baking powder and baking soda with that some other functions of baking powder uh, powder is also happen uh, that is uh, it's uh, we already checked that there are two kind of function one is it's react when it is wet and another when it is wet and dry okay and the process of reaction that is acid base reaction and this reaction actually happen whenever it's mixed with water when combined with water the sodium bicarbonate and acid salts react to produce gas carbon dioxide this reaction happened there and as you know that there are two kinds of uh, reaction in baking powder and there are actually two types of powder also present in the market that is one is single or another is double action baking powder in case of single action baking powder it's uh, just give the moisture it gives the carbon dioxide gas whenever it mix with water and in case of double acting baking powder it actually rise twice when it is dry and moist another is when the product is baked that means in case of single acting baking powder it is uh, actually mainly contain only monocalcium phosphate so this reaction happen whenever it will be dry actually it uh, give the carbon dioxide gas or produce the carbon dioxide gas but in case of double acting baking powder actually it's uh, just contain our sodium uh, two kinds of acid that is sodium pyrophosphate and sodium aluminium sulfate so uh, that is our baking powder and baking soda and their reactions and there is a question for you where you have to give an answer in your forum that what is the difference between baking soda and baking powder then that is our, our chemical leavening agent then our next one that is called our biological leavening agent now will be started and this biological leavening agent is called actually yeast and yeast is a single cell plant that feeds on starch and sugar actually it's a live agent as it's a alive uh, thing or materials so we say that it's a biological leavening agent as it has life and yeast is a living microorganism and it is destroyed actually when our temperature raised upon 200 degrees centigrade for a long time then yeast is actually dead and it grows on multiplies it gives up carbon dioxide by ferment that is starch and sugar by fermenting that is starch and sugar yeast 
just produce their carbon dioxide gas. And if uh, you use less is than your normal recipe is needed, then what happen? Your product volume not will be in desired range because yeast cannot produce the carbon dioxide gas as it is needed. So yeast, what is the activity of yeast? It just ferment the starch and uh, sugar, then it produces the carbon dioxide gas and alcohol. By this way, yeast is actually uh, raising the dough. And there are some types of yeast that actually mainly three types of yeast is present in the market or we found in the market. One is compressed yeast, that is also called cake yeast as it look like cake. And you can store it for four to five weeks in a refrigerator. Then uh, is this uh, yeast actually produced by compressing the freshest, okay? And for that reason, it is called compressed yeast as it is made from cream of yeast. And what happened here? The cream of yeast actually given in a centrifugal machines, then it's a centrifuge in a high force. And with that force, the water is drained off actually. And then this, uh, we get that actual only cream of yeast and then it's prepared this block. And it's mostly moist and it contains 70% of moisture. Then uh, our another kinds of yeast that is active dry yeast, we actually get it from the Saccharomyces service here. And it's very popular and normally we uh, regularly use this yeast in our homes. And it's granular and darker in color than cake yeast. And we always uh, purchase it in seal packs, envelopes, or in a uh, little uh, plastic pots. And it has a larger particle size, actually, than instant active rice. What we'll read just in next slide, that what is instant rice. Actually, if we can uh, check the difference between, that is one is the word that is instant. And instant means you can use instantly that. But in case of active rice, there is some other functions. What is that? That is for using that, you must hydrate it in warm water. Without hydrate in, in warm water, you cannot use that yeast. And ideally, the temperature is 110 degrees Fahrenheit for five to 10 minutes, okay? But if your temperature is more than that, or it is as 140 degree Fahrenheit, so your yeast will uh, just instantly die. So you cannot uh, prepare any kinds of product with that and your dough will not raise. Okay, so in case of hydrating that active rice, you, you just keep in mind that your temperature will be 110 degree Fahrenheit, not more than that. And we normally we use some sugars for five to 10 minutes and then we utilize it for raising. We give the time for producing the carbon dioxide gas or actually ferment the sugar. After that, we use it in the flour. That means we cannot directly use it in the flour. First, we have to hydrate it. We active the yeast and then we have to use that active yeast into flour. So it is called the active dry yeast. That you have to active it first, then you have to use it in the flour. And our second one is, uh, actually our third one of yeast is instant active dry yeast. Uh, it is smaller particle size than active dry yeast and uh, it is actually mostly preferred by the industrialists and the batteries because there is a characteristic that is a uh, regionist name that is instant. That is, it can be mixed with directly with the flour. In case of active rice, we just read that at first you have to hydrate them, then you have to add with flour. But in case of instant active rice, you can use it directly with the flour. And normally the dough temperature should be between 70 to 90 degree Fahrenheit for the cells to hydrate. And another important thing is that whenever you use the water for mixing with instant active rice, the water temperature will be quite warm as the yeast can be active instantly. And the temperature will be warmer than 100 degree, 110 degree Fahrenheit. So that is our three kinds of it. First of all, compressed is then active rice, that instant active rice. And now uh, what you have to do actually, if in your recipe you 
uh, want to use instant active rice, but you have active rice. Okay, that means one kind of yeast is needed for your recipe, but that is missing. But you have another kinds of yeast. Then what you have to do or how we can balance the recipe. You can balance the recipe by with this method. Uh, two teaspoon compressed rice, actually compressed yeast actually equal to one teaspoon active rice. And it uh, will be three, four teaspoon of instant active rice. That means if you have uh, compressed it, but you needed active rice, then instead of active rice, you have to use two teaspoon of compressed rice. Okay, by this way, you can balance the matter. And you have another question for your forum, that is from Pierre Emma, three types of yeast. You have to write this in your forum. And then our leavening agent is just finished. Now our uh, another uh, leavening agent will be started. That is we finished physical, uh, sorry, chemical and biological leavening agent. Now our physical leavening agent will be started. That is our air and steam. There is a word physical, okay? Physical means that by the use of that leavening agent, we use, uh, they uh, use the uh, flower and they can raise it. For example, air and stream. In case of air and steam, water and air make up a product rise by physical means. How? When heated, water actually turns into steam. And water change, whenever water changes to steam, it volumes actually increases by approximately 1600 times. That means it increases more uh, normal volume to 1600 times volume steam actually produced. So whenever steam actually rises and it rises and taken the product, that means whenever steam just come out from the product, it taken the product with it and then come out from the yeast come out from the flower, okay? And so it's called the actually a uh, physical leavening agent. Then our ear, ear can be uh, incorporated in the product by uh, four means, that is beating, folding in beaten eggs, twice, uh, shifting the flower, and then creaming and the shortening. That means by using that kind of method, ear can be incorporated in your product. And that's for today. And we will uh, read today actually our different kinds of living essence and you have two activities. We uh, discuss about it and your problems with your, in your discussion class. Thank you.